Um, we'll go. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to <laughs> uh, well, welcome to Living Faith. Um, and we have a lot I'd like to cover today, so I'm going to start. And let's start the way we begin as we were claimed in baptism. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Gather us, living God, as your holy people. Guide our listening and speaking our seeking and understanding, that we may freely share your gifts of abundant grace. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So, what we'd like to do, um, at, um, at UDLC, <clears throat> at UDLC, uh, one of our values and our vision statement is lifelong learning. We know that the journey of faith is never complete and there is no finish line. There is always more to experience and learn about ourselves, God, and others. Many of us began our journey of faith as infants or young children brought to the font by our parents or other family members. And others of us began our journey as adults seeking something more. We are all on a journey and God invites us to journey together. We are invited to explore our questions, read scripture, listen to one another's life experiences and look to see how is God present in all this? Is God present? And where and how am I being called here at the community of ELC, uh, in UBLC? <clears throat> how am I being called to serve in the larger community of the Synod or the greater Christian church? And most importantly, how am I being called to serve God in my daily life, in work, play, school, or um, just in um, at home? What are we called to do? So we begin our lives as baptism. We and as I'm sorry, as um, Paul says in Romans, we have been buried with Christ by baptism into death. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. And he goes on to say, Christ died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. And you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God. But how does baptism change us so that we, and shape us so that our daily life will change forever. And what does it mean to be alive to God? What is this new life? And how do we continue to nurture it and um, deepen our faith and live it out? This is what we're gonna hope to cover in this year in Living Faith. And today we are gonna start by more, looking more closely at that. We're going to look at what is baptism and how do we celebrate it. It's really going to be an overview because we don't have a lot of time, um, but we hope to hit the highlights. And I especially want to hit them because we have the baptism today at 1030, and we have two baptisms next week at 830. Oh, wow. So pay attention. <laughs> Listen to what we have. What I'd like to start out with right now is write down or just think in your head, what is one word that comes to mind when somebody says baptism? Don't think about it. What comes to mind immediately when somebody says baptism to you? Here I come. Write it or just think it. Do you want to tell you? And then if you're comfortable, can you tell me? Yeah, yeah. God with God. Okay. Jesus. Water. Regeneration. Save. I was going to say regeneration. Sorry. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's good. Okay. New life. Sinless. Just one. No, that's great. And adoption. Adoption. 
Anything else? Anyone else want to share anything? One word comes to mind. I Holy Spirit. All right. So we're not going to talk about these right now, but I want you to pay attention. It'll be interesting to discover the significance of these words, these ideas, these concepts, um, as we and how they're connected to baptism as we look at the scriptures and the actual rite of baptism this week, and we'll be talking about it over the next three weeks. So just kind of keep those um, words in mind. Child of God, Jesus, water, regeneration, saved, faith, new life, sinless, adoption, and the Holy Spirit. So let's just keep those in mind as we go and see where they come up as we talk about the different things. We're gonna start by looking at scripture. What does scripture has to tell have to tell us about baptism? And the Bible does not offer us a whole lot of detail about how baptisms actually were done, but it does offer us a lot about the meaning of baptism for the early Christians and how important it was. So what we're going to do right now is share. Um, everybody should on your piece of paper, if you turn it over, there are either two or three scripture verses on there. Um, and I would like you to pair up just with the person. You should be in, have the same scripture verses as the person next to you. If not, okay. Okay. Well, uh, at the good. end here, that may not be the case. Okay, okay. Um, what group, um, what yeah. group do you have? You I have group one and she's group three. Okay, does okay. anybody else have a group one? Uh, do you have one? You can. Okay, so just switch. Um, which three? One. Oh. One? No, no, I just passed you three. Oh, this is okay. There you go. All right. So what I would like you to do yeah. is yeah. to read the scripture verse, decide together what you think the meaning of baptism or what happens in baptism is according to the scripture verse. Summarize it in wonderful words. You can either write it as a sentence or just separate words like washing, forgiveness, rebirth, whatever it is. Um, do this for each verse in your group that you have. And you have five minutes, and then we'll share them back together. Okay, five minutes. <laughs> you can just work together on this. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, you can. You can also create something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, in that first one, George is finishing. No, first thing. You only see it one, you only see the word once here. Right. Um, um, uh, uh, so I think somehow we need to connect to the word. Otherwise, they don't see so the word is the 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 Okay, we'll have to announce that. So, once again, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They call me good. So, all the Jews, Greeks, slaves, are free. We're all in one spirit. Okay, so we're going to make one. George is set. It's high as it's all together. Once you're gentle, well, yeah. how about real system? It's very painful. That's what makes a man of the faith. Spirit, uh, I somehow joining us together. Somehow, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. That, yeah, that's the key. That's the key right there. Spirit. That's good for you. We should have a standard in here, you know. On show, or do we just think you want to raise your hand so we know what we said? Yeah, okay. All right. So, okay, let's do what it does to do. What is the meaning of baptism for? Yeah, yeah, I think that's what it's in baptism. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
that's what we're to is if we can probably can believe the child that we're going to do that. We didn't quite on the track. Just no. There's ain't going to be one of four words. Yeah, Depending on the I don't know. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So, well, how many times did you do that to me? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I just uh, we just had a little Walter Gill price here. Yeah. Okay. Pat reminded us. <laughs> what I do wrong this month? <laughs> oh, is this your month? Yeah. Okay. Can you pay? Um, we'll let you come talk later. Okay. Who had John through who had John three, one to six? Three and one. Okay, so you did it and you got it. Uh -huh. All um, right. So um mm -hmm. Sally. Yes. Would you like to tell me what the couple words are that you thought John three encompassed? What what does it say about baptism in John three, one to six? Well, we talked about the, the children becoming a part of the kingdom of God and how as part of the kingdom of God um we're heirs of of, uh, of, of, of that kingdom and children of, 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 of God and of course my my thing has always been how can a little child a little baby be simple in the first place. Okay, we're not going to get into that. I don't want to We're not going to get into trouble. Let's get here what the scripture says about baptism, what happens in baptism here. And so you're saying you become part of the kingdom of God, and so then you become heirs. Mm -hmm. This group over here, what did you get from John 3? Baptism is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Okay. And, the, and, um, and anything else from your group there for, well, for John 3? That phrase from above, being born, um, the kingdom of God, was, no one can then see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Mm -hmm. And the Greek um, is from above, not again. Mm -hmm. But so many translations err and call it again. And mm -hmm. it starts okay. a whole other thing. Right. But this okay. is not a, an achievement. This is a gift. Okay. Okay, so, so it's a gift of the Holy Spirit. All right, um, I'll start with your group there, Emily and Paul. What did you? She's um, group one. Yeah, you're both yeah. group one. Yes. So you had Titus three also. What were your? Didn't get oh, there. 
Oh, I didn't know. Oh, you're all three of them. Yes. Yes. What did you guys get for Titus? Oh, you told me. Titus is a meeting of baptism. What happened? What happened? Did you oh, have gosh, we're justified by grace? And become we, heirs? Become heirs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as children. 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 In the hope of eternal life. Same thing. Same thing. Yeah. It's not our achievement. It's not our, yeah. It's not something okay, we it's do. It's a gift again. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So was there anything about rebirth, renewal, anything like that in either of those? Yeah. Yes. Rebirth and renewal. Okay. Um, just, we're just yeah. looking at some of the words that are used. Okay. Um, and the inheritance. That as as heirs, we will inherit the kingdom. Okay. Yes, we have that. Okay. Um. All right. So, and then I think you had one more um, Ephesians one, right? So yes. What would you say? What would you get from the Ephesians? What happens in the Ephesians? We're not just a seal. Seal. Okay. And mm -hmm. seal of what? The Holy Spirit. Okay. Sealed with the Holy Spirit. Okay. All right. Anything else okay. from this other group? Paul and Emily, anything else from Ephesians? Yeah, the, the seal? Titus. Holy yes, Spirit. Yes, yes. Um, baptism, the gift of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. And the Ephesians, baptism is the mark okay. of the Spirit's promise. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And don't forget the gospel. Okay, we are going to continue on with this. Is, I know this is, we're just really hitting on the, the highlights of this. So I'll send from the um, scripture readings with everybody if you want later, but right now we're just hitting the highlights. Group two. It's okay. Um, how many group twos do we have? Okay, all right. You guys are on the spotlight. What did you get yes. for Romans 6? Well, I never thought of this before, but being in Christ's death mm. and then going to his uh, being raised that he's yeah. that we're, we have to die for our sins and then come every day okay. great okay anything else with that both it seems like both of those talk about I, I being <clears throat> dying for the sin and then being resurrected and in faith and okay so you're saying and that with your colossians reading that's what you were also getting so buried with christ i never knew out. heard that before okay. well you're going to hear a lot of it from now <laughs> <laughs> um, you know about original sin and, <laughs> um, and um forgiven what else, anything else for colossians um I just think of it, it's almost saying sort of the same thing again. Do we have another group too? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, we didn't have another group no. too. No. Oh, I said we don't have anyone on Zoom. <laughs> okay, group three. Yeah. Group three. Oh, that's oh. us. Oh, okay, yeah. so we have two group three. So um I'll ask you first first Corinthians six, nine to eleven. What did you get? Just very briefly. We're not gonna go into extra on that. Forgiveness and new life. Did the group in the oh. corner get anything different than that, or add to big, add to big it? time forgiveness mm -hmm. and anything different, anything to, other than forgiveness in your life than that one? Doesn't matter what you do, if if you believe in Jesus, you're going to be saved. Okay. okay. So it's not so much what you not do. what you do, what it's <laughs> It's more yeah. Okay. Um, how about the Acts 22? I'll start with the corner group. What did you get for that one? Acts 22, 13, 16, group three in the corner. Um, Pat or Gail, what, what did you say for that? We talked about the body of Christ in baptism with... Um, did that come out of Colossians 2? 
But it says our ancestors. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, for Acts 22. But it just says our ancestors yeah. uh, have chosen you to know his will, to see the righteous one, and to hear his own voice, for you will be a witness to all the world of what you have seen and heard. And it just kind of segued in our heads to the actual service of baptism, of how we all, as Okay. A body. Okay. Um, I think it's the same. They're saying be baptized and have your sins washed away. That's basically the same thing they said in First Corinthians. Okay. So yeah. forgiveness chosen by God. Mm -hmm. yeah. And again, so not having permission. to do anything. Mm -hmm. It's a gift. Over and over again, it's a gift. Mm -hmm. Which, which brings up the whole thing about believe in Christ. Is that something that it's that sounds like something we do to be saved? I don't like that idea. And, I don't either. You know, it's the whole what well, who was it? So one this of the is that, say that we have to believe that you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the spirit of our God. So first Corinthians six nine doesn't really say that you have to believe in Christ. It isn't uh, yeah I don't because it's, it's, it's almost, almost like a works righteousness yeah. thing. But it's you unconditional have to do something you have to do. Yeah. I don't okay. like that. But I think the yeah. yeah. saying um so we'll just say gift then. Just yes. Saying. Yes. Just say yes. okay. <laughs> sure. Unconditional <laughs> oh, excuse me guys I really we need to keep moving. Okay. okay. And I, I know this is really just hitting the highlights but I just want to um group four I don't want to leave you out here. So what did you get for first Corinthians 12? Um Initially, we don't have a good uh, yeah, we're here. Uh, okay. Trying to exclude okay. the loud mouth. Yes, okay. Go ahead. Join uh, <laughs> us to one another in the spirit. Did you want me to add this to that? Yeah, we just drew a line between yeah. one spirit and one body that is in the earth. Great. Great. Don't you think it is we're not having a big discussion. The one key thing is that we believe in Jesus and it is his word. I know. I think oh. this is a pure gift from yeah. God to be baptized. That's why infants can be baptized. Yeah. So it's, a gift. About it's just a what? gift. So join in one spirit, spirit and body. into one body. And what's about Acts 2, 41 to 45? That's the very same thing. Baptism unites us. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's through Jesus and his life. And that it, it, it is true. Yes. yes. And so if we look at our um what we put here, and again, this only captures a little bit of what's being said. And these are only nine of the other verses here. Mm -hmm. right? Speak and give. Uh, John refers that when we're baptized, we're brought into the kingdom of God. We're heirs. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. Um, mm -hmm. I would also suggest it's rebirth through water and the Spirit. Mm -hmm. the rebirth is what the terminology that's used. Mm -hmm. Titus, um, we're justified. We're justified. We are heirs. We mm -hmm. children of the gift. Um, it is a gift. And again, we have eternal life and rebirth. Um, there's renewal through the Holy Spirit. Um, we're saved from sin. Um, Ephesians, we're sealed and we're marked with the Holy Spirit. Romans emphasizes that we're baptized into Christ's death and raised again to new life. Um, that dying is. Okay. We'll just leave that till the end, please. Oh, right. right now, that's just one more thing they don't need. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I don't know. No, no, no. We are so under the crunch of time. Uh, yeah. Romans really emphasizes that death and re resurrection, and we're joined on um, Christ's death and resurrection. We receive forgiveness of sins, we receive life. Um, there's a lot of death and nuance to baptism. You know, we are, um, and we, and we have um, in Acts 22, uh, why is Ananias um, telling Paul to be baptized? Because he's been chosen for service to God, to be a witness. So, you know, it's part of the mission. You, you're baptizing, you're sent on mission. So, and as well as having your sins forgiven, we're joined in one body, um, joined to the body of Christ. And again, it's for the you know, it's a gift of the Holy Spirit, but then we're also joined in body um, to 
um, go on out into meshing. So baptism is multivalent and has many aspects and depths. And the challenge is how do we capture the depth and breadth of what happens in baptism um, and what should be emphasized? How do we convey the meaning of being baptized to our assembly, for those people who are asking to become part of the church, to people saying, so what is this thing, baptism? Um, and one of the ways that we convey this complexity is through the sacrament. Um, in our church, we have two sacraments. So, um, I can send you the PDFs later if you want, like the PowerPoint later if you want it. Um, but the challenge is how do we, how do we do this? And we do it through the sacrament of baptism. So now we come back to our early days of learning what is a sacrament. You just go to the right. Yes. Well, the right is what we do. The right is the actions, the words, um, the things so that you do. Right baptism or something. Baptism is a sacrament, and for a sacrament, a rite, I guess, is the official, um, I'm kind of talking about me out with this, is a rite different than a sacrament? I mean, to me, the rite is the actual words and yeah, the actions yeah, that are right, used yeah. to yeah. enact the sacrament. Yeah, and the sacrament is something Jesus told us to do. Okay, so that's one yeah, of the things. The sacrament is, is something Jesus told us to do, and what yeah. he uses is ordinary, ordinary things. things, ordinary things, and as well. That's the yeah. 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 ordinary thing. The word. And the word of, of God. So these are that's our Lutheran definition and the and Catholic just definition is basically uh, especially Lutheran is something Jesus commanded us to do, uses the physical element, and is connected with God's promise, the word of God which gives faith. So Jesus commanded us in Matthew 28, go and baptize. What's the physical element we use? Water. Water. And it's connected with God's promise. All these scripture readings expand on what the promise is, but um, Luther uses specifically, he talks about Mark um, 16, 16, where he says, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. So Luther goes on and says, baptism is not just plain water, it's water contained within God's command and united with God's work. Meaning, it's water doesn't make these things happen. It's God's word, which is with and in the water. With God's word, it is a baptism, a grace filled water of life, a bath of new birth in the Holy Spirit. You have that order? Yes. You couldn't baptize if there were certain unusual circumstances. Could somebody be baptized? Could someone baptize someone to make the order? Yeah. You could baptize them using something else, some other kind no, of liquid, right? Or a pen. Anyone happen. can baptize. Yes, I know that. I think you can baptize them. Yes, I know that. I think you can baptize them. I think you can baptize them. I think you can baptize them. I think you have to be really the new person. The availability. But you'd have to be like dying in the desert and you drunk all the water and somebody says, well, I'd like to be baptized. What I'd like to do right now is look at the actual right of baptism and what we say, what we do here in the Lutheran Church. You'll be hearing this today or next week when you go to 8 30. And examine how what we understand baptism to be is reflected in our sacrament and in the liturgy that we use. So if you want to turn to page 227, the bottom of the we'll have it up. Here you go. <laughs> So, we're going to take these down. 227, if I can take the beginning. Okay. We're going to read initially when, um, at the beginning of the uh, rite of baptism, of the sacrament, we have the presentation of the candidates. And the presider speaks and he says these words, which essentially no, is a summary of what's happening in baptism and gives us an anticipation. Hey, would you mind reading? Sure. 
God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Okay, so who is the actor in this? God. God. Okay, and how is he described? Richard. 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 And now let's just pick out the verbs. What happens? Um, what does God do for us? Yes. He raises us to new life. Okay. Delivers us from mm -hmm. sin. Unites um, us. Unites us. Anoints. Joins. So that's exactly oh, what we were hearing yeah. early. So we heard that you that in baptism we are a God yeah. is the actor, and He gives us new birth. We um. We're delivered from sin and we are raised to a new life with Christ. The second option here essentially says the same thing, but here it speaks specifically of joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So in baptism, our gracious heavenly mm -hmm. father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. So this is really, it's a wonderful introduction to give both the candidates and the assembly uh, and you know, anticipate what is going to happen now as this person is being baptized. Again, God is the actor. We're buried in the waters. We die and we're raised up to new life, born anew, united, anointed, joined, and continue to grow. Um, it's what I'd like to point out, we're just going to go over this very briefly on the next page on 228. Candidates are presented. Those who are old enough to speak for themselves say they do want to be baptized and they, they accept it. Um, this responsibility, but for anyone who's too young, then the parent or whoever's bringing them to be baptized has to answer to them for themselves. And these, as you bring your children to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities. Who would like to read these responsibilities? I will. To live with them among God's faithful people, to bring them to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture them in faith and prayer. Okay, that's what they're supposed to do, right? Keep going. Oh, so that your children may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. And then the parents are asked, do you promise to um, help? Yeah, I'm sorry. Do you promise to uh, uh, I'm my help, help your children, children grow, grow in the faith and life? And the response is, we do. But not only are the we're going to come back to the slide in just a second, but not only are the parents asked to do that, but the sponsors are asked, do you promise to nurture these persons in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's spirit and help them live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? And the sponsors say, I do. But also people of God, each of us who are there in the congregation are asked, do you promise to yeah. support them and pray for them? So how many of you were aware that you were promising to do this mm -hmm. at every single baptism? Absolutely. Yeah. Not just with the parents. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Great. Right. I'll tell you, I honestly, you know, I hear it and I've always said, oh, yeah, the sponsors and the parents have a good job to do. <laughs> I did not take it super seriously. And I, we will go into this more That's next That's a hard week. thing to do. I mean, you're promising something to do that it's difficult to do. Mm -hmm. You don't even know if you're going to see that child. Yeah. Right. So we will go into this in more detail next week, but this mm -hmm. is something to listen. And it is, you know, um, some 
Pastor Hoffman, who will be speaking at the end of the month for us, um, said, you know, some people have put that we should have a one of those caution signs, construction signs at the pond. Warning. Warning. We do have to keep the city. Just a sidebar. I don't know if everybody's aware, but on page 1160 of this book, there's a small catechism mm -hmm. and that's contained in that. So if you're ever sitting before worship and waiting for things to happen, a small catechism is there for your, your daily reflection. Which the catechism is printed out on you know six pages there. Is it in the old channels? Because I have no, it was never in. Yeah. 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 We never had that before. It's about yeah. And the section on baptism is covers all this. Great, thank you. Okay, what I would like to do now, um, and again, I apologize, we are going quickly, but um, I would like to do just a little bit more here so that we can go to the baptism to be aware of what, you know, take it, you know, just think a little bit more and just listen a little harder today and next week. So the next thing that happens is everybody gathers around the font. The presider will say a prayer over the water in the font, and then the, the child or the candidate, the adult, will be either immersed fully if it's a large enough font, or water will be poured over his or her head, mm -hmm. um, and we will baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's read this Thanksgiving at the font, the blessing of the water at the font. It's beautiful and it gives us so many images of water and the meaning of the water, the baptism, and then what's happening. Uh, this is on 230. It's labeled Thanksgiving at the font. Yeah. Who, who would like to read that first? I will do it. Oh, okay. You can say it all together. Okay, do you want it? Um, yeah. Okay, we can all read it. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And we we give you thanks, O oh God, God, for the beauty of your spirit, and the beauty of your waters, and the beauty of your world, in which you took the light, and the water you delivered now, and his family. And we can see that your people did turn off from slavery and freedom. And what are these images of water and what are we saying in this prayer of the Lord font? Water has been really important for the life of the body. Yeah. Okay. And also it's really for the beginning of life from the ocean. Okay. Where it's believed that life began. Uh -huh. Okay. And what else? What are some of these images? We we hear a lot of scriptural images here. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word, um, you created the world. What is that a reference to? Creation. 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 Exactly. Creation. This is if the spirit hovered in Genesis. The spirit hovered over the uh, waters and and Life is brought out of nothing, it's out of death and dark and chaos. Through the waters of the flood, we deliver Noah. What are we talking about here? The flood. The flood. The no, you know, we're referring that again. It's this destruction, death. There was evil in the world, and there was this, and, and there was one good guy in his family. And yeah. God brought uh, so so Noah got saved because he was good. I just want to say it's really great to be back. I just want to say thanks to Elizabeth and Dottie for planning, doing so much work in your team for planning out, you know, the fall and for getting this fixed up. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, uh, 
um, so that Paul Hawk and coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. Them too. So anyway, I don't want to I just want to say thank you and just there's um there's multiple versions of this prayer that's like different parts of scripture and uh so you can mix them up but we have so many baptisms which is a lovely thing we're mixing them up so the, you'll notice the water prayer might be a little different but even if you look at all the water prayers you would see all the i mean these are the big stories, but all the stories, the ways God uses water to bring about salvation. It's, so you'll hear some of that in the service. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you so much. Yeah. So so we have we have references to what the Hebrew scriptures, what what the people we've been brought up with, and it's always um, God bringing death out of, and new life and um, out of destruction and life. Um, the I'm, I'm just I'm sorry. Um, baptism and it connects us again to Jesus's death and resurrection, bringing us out um, from the power of sin, bringing us into the freedom of a new life. Um, we have the Holy Spirit, this is mentioned in here. Um, I think it's important as you go and you listen to uh, the prayers. Um, this is one, as the pastor said, but there are it's always the such the session. This, um, reference to the new life, new beginning, and rebirth. But water is very reminiscent of not only new, new life and birth and things, good things, but think of a year ago, mm -hmm. death of destruction from the drownings, from the flooding, and things like that. Um, so and the flooding name. So it's water is evokes a lot of different images and feelings. It can be life-giving and destructive, it can be soothing, but it can also be shocking. Um, but that's what baptism is too. There's so many, it's, it's, water is a wonderful image or use of an element for baptism because it helps to um, bring out some of the nuances because we're not just comforted in the warm bath of baptism. We are also challenged yeah. to live up to what God's calling us to in the world and bring up the right So it's there are a lot of different images. Um that and this particular prayer and some of the others will always tie in with the Hebrew scriptures and bring us into the, what the understanding of the early Christian church was in our current understanding of baptism. Dying and rising, washing the water, it's given new life. Um, in some churches, uh, both Lutheran and Catholic, a uh, new garment was given. This happened to be the garment that was given to my children when they were baptized. And it's putting on the new life, putting on Christ. It's a new life mm -hmm. for the child. Um, so again, these are some of the images that are used. Mm -hmm. um, How about the oil? Okay, we'll get to that. <laughs> After the child is baptized, and if there is a new garment that's given, we have the laying on of hands, and then the signing with the cross. And if you want, you can follow on 231. Um, we, we pray, we give you thanks to God that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons to the bird, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. And laying on the hands, Sustain a child with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. And then using the oil, the sign of the child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Love that. Love that. What, what, what are those actions? Or water. Water, yeah, with water. Right, water. You do the water usually. I mean, it's yeah. the oil, but what would if they use oil? Because oil is often used. Um, I know here we use oil, and in a lot of other churches they do. But what would be the significance of the oil? What are some of the um symbolism? The only thing I can think of is there's references in the New Testament of, of uh oil being used to anoint Jesus, yeah, um, anointing not, and, and the kings. And that's all I know about that. I mean, I don't know. I don't really even know what that means. 
Okay. Well, oil is a sign of strength, like the athletes in the old days were all were oiled up sometimes to make them more slippery when they were <laughs> wrestling and things, but also it was a sign of strength and strengthening the muscles and helping and cure. It's a sign of healing yeah. and it's anointing. And anointing meaning set apart and especially set apart for the work of God. Mm -hmm. um, and so your prophets were anointed, the kings were anointed. Um, some of the vessels used in the temple were anointed um, and blessed. So it's, and it's a plain, and oil sticks longer than water. Um, mm -hmm. So you don't, like if you get oil on clothing or something, it's a little harder to rub out. So it's a mm -hmm. sign again of you are claimed forever by the Christ. Mm -hmm. You are marked forever mm -hmm. and sealed with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That forever is beautiful. And, and this marking and signing with the cross is important. That's what we do when we use the sign of the cross in church and prayers or as we walk or enter into the church. It's a reminder of our baptism, of who we are and whose we are. And a lot of churches will have the font at the entrance as you come in, so you can dip your hand in it. Mm -hmm. um, or like in a Catholic church, a lot of times you'll have a little repository of water at each door so as you walk in it's um, always the holy water and it's blessed water so you can bless yourselves but it's a reminder of baptism yeah yeah um and it just depends on the church and all uh, who does this um and then the last few signs before we run is um uh, a lighted candle is given to the baptized jesus said i am the light of the world whoever follows me will have the light of life or in Matthew 5, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And then at the very end, we welcome the baptized into the community. The whole assembly says, we welcome you into the body of Christ, into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. So what really struck me in this welcome is that we're welcoming, welcoming them into our midst to be nurtured, sustained, and formed, and also as a way of praising and thanking, but it's also we're sending them into the Join us in our mission. Let your light shine and bear God's prayer. I believe so. Anyway, I entrust you with the baptism and join us today for the attention next week. And then we go to Terry Community to be baptized. And pay attention to how you are experiencing the dying and rising and new life. Thank you. So be continued. Everyone, what's coming up? Yeah. Yeah, she. Yeah, they're going to set up the family. Yes. All right. Yeah.